Hello and welcome to the Digital Insight, the technology, procurement and supply chain podcast that delivers valuable sea level perspective into the core issues surrounding business transformation and digital disruption. Each episode will bring you the most inspiring executive insights from those who are leading transformation strategies within the world's biggest and best known companies. The Digital Insight, disrupt, transform, evolve. Welcome to the Digital Insight, the official podcast series for CPO Strategy and Interface Magazines. For today's episode, we travelled down to London, where we spoke with John Adams, Group Procurement Director at Barrett Developments. John explores how the company's competitive edge comes from a supply chain that is well-equipped and capable of catering to the demands of today and of tomorrow. I think organisations generally now regard supply chain as a key facet of the organisation, something that can give you competitive advantage. Um, And even if it can't give you competitive advantage, it can give you other um, benefits to the organisation that are um, more than just, can we save you some money? So everybody thinks of procurement as the organisation that just try and save money. Clearly, that's a big part of what we do. Um, But there's much, much more to it than that. Um, and, and in the role I'm in at the moment, actually, um, it costs us more not to have components than it does to have cheap components, as it were. So the availability of product is as important. Uh, and then you've got other arenas such as I don't know, the sustainability agenda and things like that, which are becoming more prevalent. And they're heavily uh, influenced or they have a he- heavy influence on the supply chain and, and how it operates. It, it is an impact on them. Um, and depending on what level you are at the business, there is um, a varying degree of understanding. But we spend a lot of time, or I spend a lot of time, with some of the key stakeholders in the business, trying to help them understand why supply chain is important, why things they do influence what the supply chain can and can't do for us, uh, and how they can change some of their behaviour to to enable the supply chain to be more effective and more efficient, which then benefits them. So that's quite a big part of, of what we've done over the last sort of five, ten years, is, is slowly um, enrol various parts of the business into the importance of supply chain and get them engaged with the supply chain. So it's not seen as just a procurement thing and we're the only people who can talk to our suppliers, but you know everybody should be talking to them. Um, at the end of the day, we're not necessarily the subject matters on everything, so we need those subject matters to be engaged with the suppliers so we get the best out of them. I guess we're controlling about £500 million worth of spend, a mixture of um, direct and indirect. Um, Essentially, we're a manufacturing business, so the direct is by far the largest part of that. It's probably about £450-odd million of the the £500. The the key to our business is providing our customers with the product that they want when we said we were going to provide it at a quality level that will um, give them a, a, a positive experience of new build. And you'll have seen... I guess in, in the press over the last 12, 18 months particularly, there's been quite a lot of um, focus on the quality of the product. The, the, the key task for us has been trying to make sure that we have a supply chain that is capable of feeding our machine. We're about 95% of the materials that go into the product. As the demand has grown, so in the low point, Barrett's as, a, as an entity were uh, producing something like 10, 10,500 units. We're now producing about 18, 18,500 units a year. That is a significant shift in terms of the amount of product that we need. Um, the supply chain has, or through the downturn, descaled, de- if you like, um, and some of that skill set and some of that capacity disappeared completely. Um, our, our main focus over the last probably you know, say five to ten years has really been making sure we've got a supply chain that's capable of feeding the machine that we've got now and in the future. At the same time, looking at different and new ways of producing housing um, because there's a skill shortage, or the, there is and there's becoming a more acute skill shortage across the industry. One of the key things for us is either de-skilling or removing the requirement for skill on site. So there is a big push now to try and um, integrate what's called modern methods of, modern methods of construction um, into what we, what we do. We work very closely with our design and technical team um, to, to uh, work with our supply chain and trial and mature technologies that we wouldn't normally use. 
uh, and then in integrate that into our day-to-day -day business as usual production facility uh, or production capability. So from a strategic point of view, it is matching supply chain capability with our demand and then for the long term, it's looking at new uh, methods of construction and developing a supply chain capable of supporting us over a long period of time. So through the downturn, we very much had to focus um, our demand on fewer suppliers so that we kept those suppliers in a good state of order and they were then able to support us in the upturn. So we did quite a lot of work choosing who the suppliers were for the long term in the downturn and then working with them in the upturn to make sure they got the capacity to meet what we required. Um, I mean, that does involve quite a lot of conversation and discussion about, you know, five, maybe ten year future demand uh, and, and actually having honest conversation to say, will you be there in that sort of quantity at that point? Because if you're not, I need somebody. And we've had to introduce people along the way to support the people who were the mainstay who we, we centralised with in, in the downturn to make sure we had got appropriate supply in, in the upturn. Uh, and it's, it's been an interesting journey um, because in, in this industry, some of the supply chain, I don't wish to be rude to them, but they're not necessarily as mature in their thinking in um, capacity planning, in root cause analysis and all the things that we need to, to be good at in order to make sure that they can make the best of the capacity they have available. So we have spent quite a lot of time trying to develop the supply chain because I'd, I'd much rather work with somebody that I know that is willing to work with us than bring somebody in that I don't know um, and start a brand new relationship. Um, clearly, we, we do bring new suppliers in and we do have to swap suppliers out if they, they really have, have been found that they can't um, live up to the demands we put on them. But, but generally speaking, I want to work with the people that I've got a long-term relationship with. I think the first thing we had to do was break down some of the old working practices that were very adversarial. And there is still, a, still some of that in the business, but it's much, much less than it used to be. Um, and, and if you haven't got that and you haven't got a, a sort of level of trust between yourself and your supplier, you're not really going to get very far. So the first thing to do was change people's view of what our supply chain is, what it does for us and how important it is. Once you've done that, you've got a much easier engagement model. When it comes to that engagement model, we've got a very sort of tiered approach. So as you go down the tier of, um, of supply chain, um, that will fall to either myself to have the leading relationship or my team to have the re leading relationship. But we ensure that we have a relationship with the senior, in, the senior um, management team of all of our suppliers um, so that we can get the right level of engagement with them. Once we've got that, it's then about how do you identify the issues that lie between us that prevent either them or us being efficient, um, getting to the root cause of those issues and then trying to resolve those root causes and move on. That, include, that, that, that will include changes in our business as well as changes in their business. So we have uh, a number of um, organisations that we work with who are in pretty small supply dynamics, if you like. There, there are a few suppliers in that particular commodity set um, so we don't have the opportunity to say, don't like you, we're going to go to you or you or you. We have to make sure that the people who we've got and deal with, we get them in the right place because otherwise we've got no alternative. We've done quite a lot of work uh, making sure that we have a supply chain conference every year to explain to all of our suppliers what it is we expect of them and indeed what our vision for the future is as a, as a corporation. Um, so they understand our objectives and, and how they fit into that. Um, and and then if you, if you sort of work down the the operational model, um, we have somebody in our team who is specifically uh, engaged to look at supply chain development, so they have a lot of the, the tools of um, uh, root cause analysis, 5Y, five, five whatever it is, all, all of those tools, and we're finding more and more they're using those tools just generally in their business, not, not just as an interface with Barrett. It's, that's all part of our commitment to our supply chain and our investment in the supply chain um, to make sure that we've got a, uh, a set of suppliers who can deliver what we need when we need, right quality standards and, and indeed at the right price and some of that is about the work we do working together to identify um, how we can take cost out without reducing quality or service. <music> learning right the way across. Um, I, I guess 
most of the learning is taken from the bigger suppliers and we try and pass that down just because some of them are, are either more sophisticated or we come across issues with them that are more obvious because of the size of the relationship we have with them. Um, but equally, we found things in smaller supply chain members that are um, lessons, if you like, that can be passed up the chain. It is a point of differentiation between, I think I said, between us and most of the, um, the, the, the competitors we have in this particular uh, marketplace. Um, because we work closely with them, um, we're getting to a position, I'd, I'd like to think, and I think there's evidence to suggest, where we become a customer of choice. So in the, in the instance of a, um, an increase in demand and a potential uh, constraint in supply, we find that we are getting our components where other people aren't because we just have a stronger relationship with people. Um, okay, we have some advantage, we're bigger than most, so you know, there's a commercial uh, position for them there. But I think it goes beyond that. Strength of the relationship means that we can lever that in order to get supply when other people can't. Um, equally, we can lever that to do things with some of our supply chain that other people can't. It's, you know, it's always a dynamic environment. There's always something changing. There's always a new challenge. Um, if you sit back and just ignore it, you, you're just going to get in, into a position where you fall behind the pack. If we're not doing that, then we're going to fall behind. Or, and, and you know, w worst case, we're not going to be able to get, we're not going to meet our strategic objectives to grow the business. Uh, and that would be a, a failing restricting by purely by the supply chain and clearly we don't want that to happen. Uh, if we didn't have the, the right relationships, they wouldn't engage with us on topics that are two, three, five, ten years in advance. Um, and it, you know, so, some of the conversations we have are, you know, require quite some significant investment in the near term in order to get something in the long term. If we haven't got that trust now, they won't in, make that investment uh, and, and then we're left with a position where we can't take advantage of new technology going forward. You know, I've, I've got a blend across the team of some people who've come through the industry and some people who've come outside the industry. Um, the people in the industry probably don't have the same breadth of thinking on some topic, subject matter as people outside the industry. People outside the industry don't have the detailed knowledge of construction. So it's, it's a blend and, and we try and encourage the team to cross-fertilise, if you like, their, their, their knowledge so that everybody gets up to a, 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 a sort of level playing field. You know, egg, every egg's not going to be a bird, so you've got, to, you've got to be prepared for investing in something that actually doesn't end up being a, a benefit to the business at the end of it. Um, You've got to hope that eight times out of ten it is, and, and eight times out of ten generally it is, but you will have some failures. You can take some learning from that failure and try and make sure you don't have that failure again, um, but sometimes it's just a technology that you thought was a good idea that then you get to the end of it saying, actually it doesn't quite work, whether that's for you or for the customer or whatever. So you just part that and say, okay, we've tried it, and we'll, we'll move on to something else. Um, I think if you look at the landscape of our supply chain, um, both direct and indirect actually, um, the amount of engagement we have compared with the amount of negative result is, is very little. Um, but when we do have that, it's important to sit with the suppliers and explain to them why it didn't work, what, what fell out, was it the process we went through, was it the product we were looking at, was it the practicality of delivering that product and using that product on site, was it the customer's issue, whatever it is, I think it's very important to go through that in a structured way at the end of the project, whether it's a success or a failure, to be honest, um, so that everybody understands the, if you like, as you said, the highs, the lows, the wins, the, the not so wins, um, and, and all the failures, uh, and, and you actually learn from the whole experience whether it was good or bad. I think there are two, there are two or three drivers in terms of technology or just doing things, whether, whether it's actually technology or whether it's just doing things differently. But there are probably two or three different drivers. One absolutely is government and legislation and legislation change. Um, and the speed of legislation change is um, ever increasing, um, particularly around the efficiency of the home, carbon reduction, all those sorts of things. Um, so those things are almost imposed on you, although there's consultation with, with government and you know, we, we arrive at a position that everybody knows when we get there broadly what it's going to be, um, the timescales to implement those are getting ever shorter. 
So at the moment we're talking about um, removal of gas, gas boilers into homes by 2025. Um, we're also talking about a new set of regulations that will hit us maybe 2022 or three. Um, and that could be quite a seismic change in insulation, in window performance, in heat management. So that, that's a very short window to get some of the technologies that you would need to support that actually in place, um, trialled, approved, supply chain sorted, so we've got um, continuity of supply. Um, so those things, I don't think, you, you can't necessarily control them. It is a, a little bit reactive, even though we have uh, involvement in the consultation. But actually, the, the business is fairly fleet of foot in that respect, so it's quite good at doing that. Um, and our supply chain is getting better at responding to it. I think they're becoming more aware of some of those changes, so they're getting in front of the curve a bit as well. Um, the, the other area of change is going to come from customers and, and what they want from our product. And that's a bit more difficult to judge sometimes because the, there, is, there is an element of the customer doesn't know what the customer doesn't know. Um, but they are becoming better informed. So things like smart houses, integrated um, technology inside the house, um, smart controls, heating, lighting, all that sort of stuff. Um, the, the, there, is, there will be more of a drive from customers to demand certain things of us that we haven't really had before because they are becoming more informed. Um, our skill and requirement, if you like, is to be able to capture that in enough time to be able to then deliver on customer expectation. And again, that's not easy, but once, we've done, once we do that and go through that process, delivering it again, is it, we, again, we can be quite fleet of foot in, in getting there. So the, the real trick is actually getting the information into the organisation, disseminating things that are important and things that there aren't, and then focusing on the things that are important as, as strategic objectives going forward. Um, and, and if you look at our strategic framework, it's been broadly the same for the past six or seven years where we've had the same four or five key principles. They don't change really. Um, what, what we need to do to achieve those and keep in front of everybody, because most of them are around leading something or other, whether it's leading construction or being a, a leading uh, employer of choice. Those type of things are, the, the boundaries are always going to be going forward. You're always going to have to push something. I think in 12 months' time, um, we will have looked to supported some of the demands that are going to be placed on us through, we've just mentioned leg legislative change, are going to make some big differences to how we construct housing and the products that we're using in that construction. Um, and so there's quite a challenge for us to make sure that the supply chain is aligned to that. And we've got quite a lot of work to do in a relatively short space of time to get there because some of the technologies that may need to be used um, aren't necessarily at the scale or, or quite a way off the scale that we're going to need to deploy them, not just for Barrow but for the whole industry. Um, so I think the first, the, the first short term goal is to get into a position where we have got a sustainable supply chain that can support our needs going forward, um, utilising some of the new technology and componentry that we need. Um, the, the second area would be to have a team that's developed a little bit um, so we've got a, a slightly more broader span of um, skill set um, and we, we have some gaps that we know we need to plug. Um, but, but people are so important to how we run the business and achieving our overall objectives that we need to make sure we're constantly upskilling them so that they can actually meet the challenges going forward. So there are certain areas of technology and legislation and various um, I, I guess more technical things that the team need to be abreast of, need to be, become subject matter experts in. There's quite a journey from their perspective. So if in 12 months time I've got a team that's more um, au fait with some of the things that we uh, need to meet in terms of challenges going forward, then that would be a good thing as well. The strength of the team is in the strength of the, the people in the team. Um, the ability to deliver absolutely rests on the people who are doing that delivery. So if I haven't got a team that's capable of doing what, what we need to do, then we're going to fail. Um, so they are pivotal, pivotal to, to what we do, and to, to everything we do. Now that's not to say technology isn't important and embracing some of the new um, you know, IT, whether it be you know, um, 
intelligent systems that are learning things, whether it is um, more electronic commerce, whether it is you know, e-enabled um, technology for our customers, whatever it is. Those things are important, but the, the basic building block is, is people in the team and their capability and, and their ability to uh, be able to relate to, infuse, develop uh, and, and embrace the supply chain that they're working with. Thank you for listening to the Digital Insight Podcast in association with the interface.net and cpostrategy.com. The Digital Insight is brought to you by B2E Media Limited. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to subscribe, rate and review. And don't forget to check out our podcast archive at www.b2e-media.com forward slash the digital insight.